I have got this illustration that I started, I don't know, a year or so ago when I was experimenting with this idea of taking um, stuff, posing them in some posing type program, and then uh, illustrating them either out of that program or through ZBrush. Uh, since I did that, ZBrush has this um, uh, do, 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 rendering thing where in theory, if I could find them, is it render set? Yes. Where you can render your stuff out in um, a variety of styles. Anyway, the point being, at some point, if I make my sculptures the way I like them, I should, in theory, be able to render them out to look like something kind of like uh, the illustrations that the other ones I have in the book, so. All right, here we go. So then, uh, one thing I can do is to get a sense for how big I want this Mulek to be is I can just make bow mark the appropriate size. So obviously this is too small. So he needs to be able to sit on this bench. Let's just pretend that he's sitting and not kneeling. Um, let me bring up the illustration I have that this is based on. So there's the the Dridian monster that he's shooting the bow and arrow at. So I'll keep that over there. Um, where is my Mulek illustration? Ah, here it is. Okay. So, yeah, I feel like he just needs to be like 20% smaller than I previously had him. Which, in this case, I just keep bow mark at whatever scale I need and uh, that'll work just fine. I'm also, I'm trying to think for story reasons. Is there a reason that this animal needs to be a uh, smaller or, you know, as small as I can get it? I mean, the bigger the thing is, the more it needs to eat. This thing isn't herbivore, so it's just always eating plants along the road. Uh, we don't have it going through deserts or anything where it's going to be particularly, you know, where that would be a, a caloric intake would be a huge concern. Um, yeah, really the only story thing I have is that it starts raining really hard and Beaumark and a traveling companion t uh, can't take shelter under here. So they're, they're seeking shelter from a storm. And so they lead the muleg over to a rock outcropping, and that's important for a little scene that I've set up. Um, and so I guess with all the gear, plus Scola, plus two full-grown men, the important thing is that they can't get into that tent. Um, Although, there's no reason that this tent wouldn't stick out further, you know, like on uh, wagon trains or whatever, they always, like, stick out. So let me actually adjust that. That feels like it makes more sense to me. I... These pots and pans are just way too small now. That I made the Mulek smaller. They're like a uh, play school little toy pots and pans. Wow. Uh, okay, how do I make just these guys bigger? I can select them now, bring everything back. Let's see if I can invert the selection. Nope, invert the selection, there we go. Right about in the middle of these guys. Well, not not in the middle, actually, right where their handles are. Okay. There was in the future where I could just like 3D print this out as a diorama and then photograph it. That'd be fun. I mean, 
I guess we do live in a world where if I figured out how to do rendering, I could render it. Oh, that sounds a lot harder to me than doing it as a diorama for some reason. Oh, the floor is low because Mr. Dridian here is too big. Down, Mr. Dridian. Let's put him next to Beaumark. You're supposed to be about man size. But skinnier. And much, much lighter. That feels about right. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember, like, I posed Beaumark and the Mulig and the Dridian all in such a way that the, like, the angle of the shot was going to be, like, really cool and you could, like, see clearly what was happening, but I can't remember if the, if it went this way or this way. Or this way. I don't know. What do you do when you have unusually, I mean, when usually you almost never have headaches, like once every week or so, to having one pretty much all day every day for a week? Does that mean I have a brain tuber and I'm gonna die? Is that what that means? Confirmed. Uh, anyway, let's try to find something kind of close to our concept here. Again, I'm not I'm not like slavishly beholden to this concept, but um, you know, I like it enough to go in that general direction. These are really interesting little blobules here that I don't don't remember ever seeing looking at close-up insect wings but uh, it's interesting and I would like to make that a feature of my wings because they're interesting I wonder what wings are these cicada wings okay, okay. And the other major shapes that I have on these wing tips are just kind of this Thing going on here I think I saw that on dragonflies or something but again I'm not trying to reproduce a specific insect so just pulling inspiration from some of the shapes mixing and matching them yeah, mantids are the main inspiration for these guys so they have these ridges that have these little bits and spikes that poke off of them. go into these like interesting ridge lines <laughs> someone did a little photoshop in there yeah. Igor uh, I have no idea how to pronounce his last name but he does these just stunning photographs that I've been collecting over the years. So those kind of spikes are nice. This is pretty close to like, it's just, it's so disturbing. Like, how does that hold together sort of thing? And then these kind of weird 
like shapes that are just on there in weird places. Um, these kind of little ridges and flanges and stuff like that. That's the kind of thing I'm inspired by. I want to make sure this guy has plenty of... Also, I'm trying to establish strong lines. I don't want these kind of wobbly, wavy shapes. On the, on the back, um, well, I guess the, the general rule is there needs to be a strong shape somewhere. It can't all be wobbly. You can have wobbly bits and bobs here and there, but if it's all wobbly, it just looks kind of loose and unnatural. I want to give them little toothy grabbers, kind of like he has on here, all along his palette and neck, since the entire function is to just grab stuff and pull it in. That definitely ups the uh, scariness factor on him. I like it. I'm going to decide if I want the maw to like stretch up and around the back of his neck. That could be kind of weird, but also interesting. Let's try it. Can't hurt to try. Well, I'm starting to wear out, so I think this is pr probably a good stopping point. Uh, any additional detail? Probably, probably wait until I pose him the way I want him for my epic battle scene. Uh, then add his fur. His little. It'll probably be longer than this. In the book, we have it so they can shoot out, like, I know porcupines can kind of shoot their quills, which I need to do some research. Basically, when you kill these guys, this, um, like a, like an auto-destruct sequence happens, and these chemicals build up in their, in their body, and so their limbs start to, like, swell like and they're like jerking around all crazy and then they pop and then the needles fly out and if you're anywhere near them you get like a hundred bee stings all over you so they're super easy to kill because they're very fragile light creatures but you have to be very tactical about how you do it And obviously, they're very dangerous in swarms. All right. Um, I mailed the book, Fizz, yesterday. So, finally got out and did some errands. And that was one of them. It was going to go out on Saturday, but... We ended up running into neighbors that Heather had to talk to for an hour and a half, so that didn't happen. You know how Heather is. It's all her fault. You can curse her as you stare at your bedroom ceiling tonight, thinking, man, I sure wish I could be reading The Scarred King, book one, Exile, but, but I can't because of Heather. <laughs> all right, so I'll catch you guys all on the flip, flip side. Is that where I'll catch you? Yeah. Um, today's Wednesday, so probably Sunday, possibly earlier. I don't know. Heather has surgery on Friday, so I'll probably be having some downtime. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do some streaming then. We'll see. Uh, just hanging out on the couch. So I'll uh, give Heather all your well wishes and good lucks and catch you guys uh, next time. Bye. <laughs>